Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Welcome back. Hello, welcome back. We took a break, but we are here. We are here. We really needed the break. Uh, our classes changed. We had to get used to our schedules. Yes, and... I now have classes on Thursdays, and I hate it. Yeah, she was gone for a long time today, and I was sad playing Animal Crossing by myself. I was sad doing quizzes and sitting in classes for two and a half hours. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump right into nonsense news. Yeah. Ding. Ding. <laughs> Do you want to go first? Uh, sure. Cool. Okay. So, as we all know, the Grammys <laughs> happened this weekend. But right after the Grammys, the Oscar nominations were announced. So, mm-hmm. all of my news will be about either the Oscars or the Grammys. Fun. Um, I'll start with the Oscars because I only have one piece of news for that. I didn't pay attention to a lot of the nomination mm-hmm. nominees because i was like movies came out this year i <laughs> didn't even know that was a thing but one that i did notice mainly because i follow a lot of people related to this person mm-hmm. is that leslie odom jr <laughs> aaron burr from hamilton also was in a crap ton of other things right. he's amazing um is nominated for two oscars nice for the first time um for his role in the movie One Night in Miami, which looks so interesting. Which, by the way, okay, off topic. Well, no, same topic. But (laughs) Chadwick Boseman, I hope that's how you pronounce his name. Rest in peace. Um, He is nominated for lead actor for that movie. And I thought that was so cool. But Leslie Odom Jr. was also in that movie. He's nominated for best original song and Mm -hmm. also best supporting actor. And I thought that was really cool because I love him. Great. Yeah, so that's Oscar. <laughs> now, the Grammys happened. Oh my gosh. And honestly, I was a little disappointed um, until <laughs> <laughs> my two besties won. Um, so Harry Styles won a Grammy pop solo performance for Watermelon Sugar. Mm-hmm. I've low-key been listening to that song all day today. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love both of his albums, his first album and and a uh, fine line. Um, he's great. He's also the first member of One Direction to win a Grammy. Oh, interesting fact. Cool. Uh, Cause he's the best. <laughs> Don't at me. Um, and then most importantly, oh Taylor gosh. Swift won the Grammy for album of the year for her album Folklore as she should. You guys should have seen her freak out when she saw that <laughs> Taylor Swift won. She was like, freaking out she got robbed in every other category it, you were <laughs> gone it was awesome so, i was excited you got me hyped it was yeah it was great so that was great she got she won like the second biggest category yeah. tonight the first was record of the year Something like that, and Billie yeah. eilish won that and yeah. she deserved that mm-hmm. i feel yeah she's all right i like her yeah yeah that's all i got all right, so the first news story that I have is more, like, me news, and the others are Animal Crossing news because hype. Okay, so tomorrow, or it will be today as you are listening to this, I have my first speech for speech class. Speech class. I'm scared. Speech class. Because Julia's was online and mine's in person. And I think I would have rather have done my speeches in person. I don't person. know, man. I guess we'll see how I feel tomorrow. Because that's my thing. It's kind of the yeah. same thing with performing where, like, where, like, I do good in front of, like, bigger yeah. audiences because you can, I like, think, feed yes. off of their energy. Yeah, I That's why I it. hate auditioning because there's only, like, two people I in hate there. auditioning and I hate it when I, like, perform in front of, like, really small groups of people or, like, yeah. when I play in seminar there's only a couple of people. Yeah. That makes me nervous. I hate that. <clears throat> or my like, jury. But, like, but- <laughs> if there's, like, a bunch of people, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I get that. Um. Okay, so now I have two Animal Crossing news stories. Um. A big Animal Crossing update came out today, Thursday, so not when you're listening to this, for the one-year anniversary of Animal Crossing, which is the Saturday. 
And the update, we've been, I've been playing it all day. Uh, it's amazing. I watched for an hour. Yes, it's great. Um, the Sanrio stuff finally made it. Um, and there's a couple other odds and ends. We have more custom design slots. It's great. Uh, and my next story is that Animal Crossing, Times Build a Bear, the collection was announced. And I'm hyped to see what they make and how that goes because... Yes. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this um like at dinner at the beginning of the week and how they were supposed to have whoa. They were supposed to have a collection with pillow pets. Yeah, and it fell And through. now they're doing build a bear. But what I think and what I think they should do is put me on their marketing team <laughs> and they should do a collaboration with Squishmallows because yes. like everybody has access to them. They're literally everywhere. Yeah. And like they're you so can popular. make so many of them. At Build a Bear, I feel like you couldn't make like as many villagers as one would want. But right. with Squishmallows, you can do whatever you want. Because, like, they can't fill up all of, like, the little bins that build a very yeah. just Animal Crossing characters. Yeah. Unless they make some, like, limited edition. Or they, like, they roll them know. out in waves like they yeah. did with, like, the No, I think there's very... Pokemon. With build a Bear, I feel like there's very limited things you can do. Yeah. Same thing with Pillow Pets. But, like, Squishmallows, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. That'd be so cool. It Maybe would. round... Like, it would. Like, Maybe yeah, I should have gone into marketing like I told myself <laughs> I was going to freshman year. <laughs> That's all I've got. <laughs> Same. All right. That was repeat of the week. Ding. No, it wasn't. That was nonsense oh, news. That was nonsense news. <laughs> Ding. Ding. Okay. Now we are going to Walt Lily World and I have some stories. So usually it's really hard to find some things that aren't, that are, that are interesting. Like, um, the last time we made an episode, I kept finding an article about a really disappointing pineapple skewer, and mm -hmm. we got some good stuff today. And we didn't even talk about that. Right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So sad. Okay. So, story number one, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is opening October 1st this year for the 50th anniversary. And we have been waiting for this ride to open since, like, the summer, and I'm hyped. Describe the ride, because I've never heard of this before. Okay, so this ride is open <clears> in <throat> Shanghai already, um, mm -hmm. and it's just been ported over to Epcot as well, into the France Pavilion, and you sit in, like, a cute little, like, rat, and it's, like, it's a trackless dark ride, so you can't see the track in front of you. It just, like, moves on, like, magnets. Kind of like the mummy. No, that has a track. Oh, because okay. it's a roller coaster. <laughs> I know, but that was dark and I couldn't see. Um, <laughs> the only way I know how to describe like the track list is like Runaway Railway and um, um, Rise of the Resistance, but you haven't done either of those. No. Track list is new. This is like a new thing that they've started doing recently. Okay. So it looks like you're scurrying through the kitchen and you don't know where you're going to go next. And you're, like, small size, like, rat, and, like, you're in the kitchen. It's cute. So I'm excited. Well, they have... Remy the Ratatouille <laughs> no, playing in the background. But they did take the creator of that the, of the TikTok musical through the ride already. So she's had a tour of the Ratatouille area. I want to I want to go to Disney just so I can ride the ride and sing that song the entire they time. They have new little Ratatouille ears like as a headband. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the next story is huge. Disneyland is reopening on April 30th. It's been closed since, obviously, like, March, and it's finally reopening. I thought I saw a TikTok video of Trisha Paytas trying to go there, like, a few days ago. <laughs> she tried to go? There, yeah, she was saying there was a bunch of people there, and because there were so many, she, like, started freaking out and left. Oh, my gosh. No. They've yeah. been doing a lot of construction. Like, a mega ton of construction. They might be doing soft openings for cast members, but it is most certainly not open yet. It opens next I gotta week. look at that again, because I swear that's what she said. And I think she talked about it on Frenemies, too. That's so weird. Yeah, no, it's not open, I promise. Interesting. Um, it's been, like, a huge deal that it's been that, that it hasn't been open. And it's finally having... It's still, like, I base, I'm pretty sure this is the last Disney park to This reopen. is the one in California, yes. right? Okay. Um... Okay, so also going off of Disneyland, new magic is coming to Disneyland's Haunted Mansion. So while Disneyland's been closed, they've been doing a ton of construction. And this, uh, the Haunted Mansion was down, I think, even before the parks closed. And they've been, like, up in their game on it. So I'm really excited to see what they bring. Um, because I want our, the Disney World one to get new magic. They've already got the Hatbox Ghost. Like, what more can they get? Um next um this is back to disney world um hollywood studios galaxy's edge the famous souvenir spork has returned to do to docking bay seven 
Yes. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but yes. Um, when Galaxy's Edge opened, uh, Docking Bay 7 had these sporks that people were obsessed with. They're like, I think they're like metal sporks, but they're like, like they like, like look futuristic. They look Star Wars-y. Okay. Like, these are Star Wars sporks. And people were like, I, th- I think they were either like buying them or like taking them home. And they like they discontinued them, but now the sporks are back. Okay. And I think you can purchase them. Can I just say, I have a special place in my heart for sporks. <laughs> okay. One, because of the VeggieTales uh, Lord of the Beans episode. <laughs> but two, because why don't we use sporks more often? They're right? so useful. Like, I need to get some sporks for I like, feel, our room. Yeah, like I feel that, wow, why don't we normalize spork usage? Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous so my last story today is that decorations are slowly being added to cinderella's castle and lights are being added to spaceship earth for the 50th anniversary celebration and these decorations already look so nice they're testing this the the color scheme of paint on some of the other buildings around and it's looking awesome and i'm really excited about it and that's all i have good well i got nothing well so. yeah <laughs> That's all for Walt Lily World, then. Cool. <laughs> repeat of the week. Now it's a repeat of the week. Ding. Ding. All right. So it took me a while to figure out what mine would be, but mm-hmm. I've had the song stuck in my head all week because this is what we're playing for Flute Trio, um, and we're going to record this pretty soon. We've, we've had three weeks to rehearse it, and we basically only played it once. And we have to record it, I think, next Tuesday, question mark. Fun time. After one more rehearsal. So we are, my repeat of the week uh, is Syrinx for Solo Flute by Debussy. Because he's the best. Um, so <laughs> I don't, obviously there's no lyrics to the song, but it is so cool. Um, the, the actual song Syrinx is a flute solo. But we are playing the trio version called Searings and Resonance, and oh my gosh, it's so cool. So it's the main melody of the song, but like repeated, like an echo um, in the trio. It's so cool. Um, And I'm really excited. So who's playing the main melody? Me. Me? Me. I know, but you pointed at me and then... (laughs) Oh, you. Uh, You're playing the main melody. Yes. It's cool, though. It's really difficult to put together because... It's just so, like, echoey and strange, and it's really hard to figure out. But that's what we're working on, and hopefully we can pull it 100% together to record it. Um, It's the first significant piece for solo flute written um, after Bach wrote one 150 years before. So it's basically, like, the second flute, like, solo that's, like, ever existed ever. And it's kind of a big deal. So that's really cool. Um, And I'm planning on playing the actual solo flute version for my senior recital or for a recital in the future for sure because it's really pretty. Um, Yeah, so that's all my stuff besides it's just nice. It's a really cool thing to like listen to. There's no, um, in the versions that I've heard, there's no like backing track for, you know, like usually there's like a piano part or like Mm -hmm. sometimes an orchestra part. It's just, oh man, that's awesome. All right. Your turn. Yeah. Um, so I changed mine <laughs> earlier today, and I'm kind of mad at myself about it, but God face the facts, this is a song that's been stuck in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to do a Taylor Swift song in honor of her Grammy win. Ow, oh, that hurt. <laughs> um, in honor of her Grammy win, and I had it all ready to go, like, on Monday, mm-hmm. but I've had this song stuck in my head for a while, and I couldn't remember the name of it until yesterday and i found it on spotify oh nice (laughs) so um it is uh till forever falls apart by this artist named ash who i've never heard of this is her only song i've ever heard of before but it's featuring phineas who is billy eilish's brother who also has some amazing i love phineas's music like Mm -hmm. his song um let's fall in love for the night obsessed with that song to be honest i genuinely thought you were going to talk about that Fortnite song that you've been singing all week number one victory for you yeah Fortnite. we're about to get down that that i thought that was gonna be repeat of the week and i was just waiting for it (laughs) i just keep watching tiktoks and it's like my entire for you page (laughs) is that song (laughs) <laughs> um anyway i love this song here's some lyrics from it um i'd spend a lifetime giving you my heart 
I swear that I'll be yours forever till forever falls apart. Ooh. So this is it. That's how it ends. I guess there's no more. There's nothing more romantic than dying with your friends. Till forever falls apart. We never had it from the start. Till death do us part. Ooh, that's cool. I love this song because it's basically like... I've never heard this before. It's, it's a newer song. Hmm. I don't remember. I saw it on the YouTube trending page one day and was like, oh, I mm-hmm. love Phineas. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, but I, I, don't, I feel like enough people haven't listened to it. And I think that's the only reason I'm using it as my repeat of the week is so that more people will listen to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's really good. You know, uh, for, you can probably tell from like my some of my standout lyrics is that it's basically like hey if this whole world goes to crap like i'm <laughs> glad i got to spend my time with you because you're pretty cool and i love That's you cute. so Aww. um so like in the chorus they go through like different uh things like if the tide takes california <laughs> If, like, the sky falls down or something like Mm -hmm. that and, like, all these things, they're like, at least I got to hold you for a minute or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love this song. It's cute. It's nice. Phineas's voice is chef's kiss. (laughs) So go listen to that. Also go listen to his other music because it's really good. I don't know anything about this artist who's this is actually her song because Mm -hmm. I've never heard anything else from her or else I would shout her out too. But I'm sure it's all right. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, I think that's all we have, right? Yes. All right. So that was it for actually repeat of the week. <laughs> Ding. Ding. Welcome back. Now we are about to do Waving Through a Musical Window. Yeah. Ding. Okay. So I picked our musical for this week, and it took me a really long time to think of something. And we finally came to, like, why not just do this one and get it out of the way, you know? Because, like, it's popular. We're going to do it eventually. Yeah. So we're doing Les Mis, or if you're any teacher I've ever had in the South, uh, Les Miserables. Les Miserables. <laughs> Les Miserables. <laughs> um, so we're going to give you a quick um, synopsis. So relentless policeman Javert pursues escaped convict Jean Valjean over decades through the t- tumult of revolutionary France. Valjean becomes a mayor, agrees to raise the daughter of a dying prostitute, and joins the fight for freedom. Based on Victor Hugo's epic novel. It's good. It's real good. It is. And where did you get that synopsis, Lily? Playbill. Playbill Playbill.com. For for all all your your theater needs. needs. They do more than just musicals. Well, this is waving through a musical window. I know, but they're there for all your theater needs, just in general. Unless you want to look things up about the last five years. Anyway. And there's nothing there. <laughs> well, there's things there. There's just not a s- synopsis. synopsis. Yeah. So Sad. Whatever. Well, they should put that on there if they ever hear us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. So, um, let's talk. What do you want to discuss first? Um, It's good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's I've great. I've never... The I've never seen it live before. Same. I've never seen an actual stage production Same. before. That was one of my notes. Um, well. I've only ever seen the movie with Hugh Jackman Ooh, and yes. uh, Russell Crowe. Do you want to discuss your thoughts on that for a second? Because I agree with your thoughts, and I think you should talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> so Russell Crowe is not that good of a singer. No, he's awful. It's um, so bad. My most recent viewing of the movie is that he's not quite as bad as I remember, but he's still bad. Oh my gosh, no, he's awful. Well, I know, but, like, in my head, I had, like, this, like, he is... Yeah, I know, I know. ...a curse upon the musical theater industry, (laughs) but, like, he's not that bad. Yeah, He's not, like, quite that bad. Um, he's still not good. Yeah, like, he, like, like... Once you have seen it or heard him sing, you can hear his voice echoing through your brain. I did a I did a really good impression of him a few weeks ago, Mm -hmm. and I can't remember like what the line I used was, or else I'd do it again. He was like, "Was it a two four six oh one?" It was something like that. It was so funny. I don't know. That was probably my Hugh Jackman impression. (laughs) I have no idea. I do really bad impressions, and I, I love them. They're amazing. Um, She's also an excellent Phantom of the Opera <laughs> as well. Um, uh, so, yeah. aside from that, the movie's all right, I'd say. Yeah, the it's movie's all right. It's not excellent by any no. means, but... I think the only, like... I think I only really 
I mean, no, I enjoyed the movie, like, Same. when I first saw it. I first saw it um, around when my cousin was born. Mm-hmm. That's, I think that's around the year it came out. And I checked it out from the library. Oh, wow. As my grandparents were picking up my cousin from the hospital after giving birth. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was doing when I was home alone. I was watching Les Mis. It's nice. <laughs> like my most prominent memory. But uh, Carrie Hope Fletcher has been in mm-hmm. Les Mis. She's a West End actress in London. Mm-hmm. And she's been in the show three times now as all the three different female leads. Oh, wow. Yeah. She is so good in every part. Mm-hmm. She's so good. I, um, I love that's it. kind of how I like really fell in love with it was yeah. through Carrie Hope Fletcher um so I I have listened to the music obviously aside from the movie because I can't listen to the movie's music like <laughs> y- you know you know how it is um and it's so good it's wonderful um all of the ladies like songs are my favorite because yeah. they're awesome are they're the most me? like notable songs besides uh what's that the one where they're marching. The one do you hear <laughs> where they're marching the in place. Sing? Yeah. Do you hear the people <laughs> sing? <laughs> the also some of my favorite productions on YouTube to watch of this are like kids doing the show because it's so bad. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad and it's so funny. And Kevin Lynch does a reaction. Oh to man, that's so funny. That's... Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I love bad productions of shows. Same. Like they call them like illegal productions. It's when like yeah. high schools or like like um kids or like they do productions yeah. of shows that are really popular that they probably didn't get the license for. Uh uh-uh, uh, no way. Um, no way. And they're awful and it's so funny to yeah. watch. So some of the best ones are any of the lame is ones. Mm-hmm. Uh legally blonde. Uh legally <laughs> blonde for your consideration, that's what it's called. Ah. And uh illegal Heather yes, is the queen hilarious. of all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um so Favorite songs? What are your favorites? Um, favorite songs: "I Dreamed a Dream," mm-hmm. "On My Own," uh-huh. and "Empty Chairs at Empty Tables." Oh. I feel like that's an underrated song, and I really like that song. Well, we have two of the same favorites: um, "I Dreamed a Dream," "On My Own." But my third one is "Castle on a Cloud" because uh. I I love it. My mom used to sing that to us like every night when we were little, so like it's like special. But I love the song; it's super cute. Um. Okay, so dream roll. What's yours? Uh, Eponine. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, mine's Cosette. So. It's, uh, like, <laughs> duh. <laughs> you, like, ob- I'm sure you've noticed it by now. Our, like, dream roles are very predictable. Like, you were Alphaba, I was Glinda. <laughs> That's just, like, how it be. <laughs> there, yeah. Um, I don't know. I wonder if there's a show where there's a character I want to play that's not predictable, though. Yeah, same. Hmm. <laughs> you need to. I think that. Out. No, never mind. Um. <laughs> I was going to say Dear Evan Hansen, but then I was like, no, because I cannot. I don't think I could play the sister with Zoe. Me. Zoe, yeah. You know who can, though? Ben Platt. <laughs> I will put that video on Instagram. Yes, he, he did a TikTok where he plays Zoe. It's hilarious. It's, I, oh, man, I love Ben Platt. We should talk about Ben Platt more often. <laughs> okay, so um, the last thing I have is thoughts about the show in general. It's just I haven't seen the stage show, but I've seen the movie, and I love the music. So I think we've covered yeah. everything. I always wanted to see the stage yeah, show. I've always wanted to... to see how they do it on the stage. Same. Like, really bad. It was supposed to come yeah. to TFAC before um, It was. COVID, and we were going to go see that. So the, I'm pretty sure TFAC's announcing their new season soon. And if but what Wayne about is... the other? What other one? I had season tickets for the season right. that got canceled. So am I going to get those back? I don't know. I I don't know. It's been a while since I've talked to my mom about that because mm-hmm. she's in charge of all of it. But, like, we're supposed to see Mean Girls with Mariah Rose Faith. And yeah. that's, like, the main thing Aida, I wanted to. And which we were in. Yes. Um, was coming as well. Uh. Um, but Les Mis, we were definitely going to see Les Mis and Aida for sure. And if if it's on the new season, if it comes back. My foot is so asleep. It hurts. <laughs> Um, my mom said that's 100% we're going to see Les Mis, so I yeah. have to see Les Mis someday. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. For I you. have to see all the shows. <laughs> that's it for <laughs> Waving Through a Musical Window. Oh, the prom was also on Waving there. Through a Musical Window. Ding. No, I just want to talk about musicals some more. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so we're about to go on a break, and then we're going to get into our movie. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, I'd like to put this out there. Okay. uh, Because I had this idea earlier, and I haven't talked to you about it. But basically, um, I was wondering if anybody would be interested, because I like to just, as you can see, when I get into a topic, I just, like, want to keep talking about that topic and not talk about anything else. Um, If anybody would be interested in us doing, like, instagram lives of us just geeking out about yes. random things like like i was like i would love to geek out about taylor swift someday mm-hmm. just like go on a full rant about how so much fun. i love her so if anybody's interested in that we'll put up a poll and we'll assign a day or something yeah and, and like do whatever we rant, once in a while. oh we go on rants yeah about all sorts of things it, oh my gosh yes That's all we've been doing today <laughs> is you've just been talking <laughs> um so we're good at it. I love going on listen. tangents. <laughs> I I love going on tangents. So um, yeah, yeah. We'll That's put a that, good idea. Yeah, um, we'll put that poll up if you would like to hear us go on some tangents on mm-hmm. Instagram Live, and uh, we're gonna take a break and then we're gonna talk about our movie of the week. <laughs> So yeah. we are doing our movie review now. Yes. Um, we watched uh, Dead Poets Society. Yes. Because. We couldn't think of anything else. No, we really couldn't. <laughs> um, I just like started going through Hulu recommendations the mm-hmm. other day. And this was the first one where it was like, yeah, 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 sure. So I've seen this a couple times um, in class. I've seen it. A total of two times and I think both of those times were like in middle school so this is the first like time I've watched it in full since then so Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot about something yeah same (laughs) um even though I like just did a presentation on this in my education class um I did not watch the movie I they were like here's your slide and I looked up whatever I needed to know for the slide and I because it wasn't available on anything when we were doing it but now it's on Hulu if you want to watch it so yeah okay so let's get into it here's a synopsis okay (laughs) from the internet A new English teacher, John Keating, played by Robin Williams, is introduced to an all-boys preparatory school that is known for its ancient traditions and high standards. He uses unorthodox unorthodox methods to reach out to his students, who face enormous pressures from their parents and the school. With Keating's help, students Neil Perry, played by Robert Sean Leonard, interesting. Leonard. Uh, Todd Anderson, played by Ethan Hawke, and others learn to break out of their shells, pursue their dreams, and seize the day. Seize the day. Yeah. Um, I'd like to give a warning before we get into it. Uh, there's a few like heavy topics in this yeah. movie, um, such as suicide. So I would just like to go ahead and put that out there. And we'll probably give a trigger warning before we talk about that part, too. I just want to make sure everybody's okay and knows that offhand. Um, I think that's the biggest warning to give, besides um, Knox has some creepy vibes in one scene yeah. <laughs> that's another thing mm-hmm. but again we'll put another warning before those if uh things like that trigger you right. so let us begin okay so my first thing i wrote is so we open on an all boys prep school called Welton academy and we meet todd who is basically our main character todd? mr anderson mr anderson <laughs> julio did that a couple times while we were watching it and it was funny all right yeah. So, what do you have to say? I wrote, boys be going to private school. Boys be going to private school. <laughs> That's yes, legitimately they be. what I have written down. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have Todd, and mm-hmm. he's a new kid. Right. Uh, he's very shy. He is. But he's rooming with Neil. Neil Perry, who is my favorite character in the yeah. whole movie. I love Neil so now, much. Now, Todd and Neil have some similarities in their characters. Now, Todd is, like, the shy one. Neil is popular, and he's, like, really smart. But both of them have, like, family issues. So, Todd, um, his older brother was, uh, I think, the valedictorian of his class. I think and so. <clears throat> Todd has, like, a lot to live up to. Like, mm-hmm. his parents ha- have him ha- had him transfer to this school so he could be, like, his brother. Yeah. And now Neil 
his dad is too much. His dad is a jerk. Yeah, his dad <laughs> wants him to be smart. You know, he wants him to be successful, but he, like, wants him to do it his way. Yeah, um, so, like, yeah. one of the big things is that um, they're, like, in Neil and Todd's room, and his dad comes in and tells him that he took him off the paper because he only wants him to focus on academics. Right. But and Neil, Neil is, like... He got editor that year, which is, like, a really big honor for being on a school paper, right. so. And Neil isn't a bad student either. No. Like, he's really smart, and he's doing great in school. Yeah. But his dad will not let him do any yeah. extracurricular. That's a big theme of this movie is, like, par- parental pressures. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, every boy in this movie has some kind of parental pressure put yeah. on them. So, I wrote, his roommate ends up being Neil, and then we meet Neil's friends and some of their other classmates. Yeah. So, the characters that um, we're going to talk about a lot are Knox, Charlie, Meeks. Meeks. Fix. Meeks is my other favorite character. Really? Yes. I love his cute curly hair and his glasses. <laughs> so. uh, Meeks, Pitts, and Cameron. So, that's our group of guys. Yeah. Um, they all have they, they all have different personalities, so, like... Knox is like the romantic. Charlie is the funny one. Um, he mm-hmm. he's I don't know I wouldn't say like the bad boy, but he's like nah. the, he's like the class clown. Yeah. Um, Meeks is the nerdy one. Yeah. Pitts is like the stoic tall boy. Um, and then Cameron's the goody two shoes, like the little Cameron's a snitch. Brat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nobody likes Cameron. <laughs> so that's our group of dudes. Yeah. So, then we go through a day in the life at this school. Yeah. And it's, like, a montage through, like, all the different classes. They do, like, rowing. Yeah. And, like, Um, gross All the teachers are very strict and Mm -hmm. very, like, to the book. And Mm -hmm. that's what the the point of this whole montage is, is to show, like, how boring these teachers are. Like, they have a Latin class. I'm like, ew. Um, Um, So... There's a new teacher. There's a new English teacher at this academy. Yeah. And his name is Mr. Keating. Mm-hmm. And right off the bat, you know this guy is not like your other teachers. Yeah. It's very different. Um, very out of the book. And um, he has some really interesting ways of teaching these boys. So first things first, he takes them out of the classroom and into the hallway to look at pictures of boys who have graduated the school. And he um, tells this group of boys carpe diem or to seize the day to be like these other boys yeah yeah um well to yeah he's a poetry teacher mm -hmm. and the way he uses his teachings is to help them to help the boys become free thinkers and to be able to think for themselves Mm -hmm. um, while also teaching them poetry and poetry and the lessons they're supposed to learn yeah uh carpe diem or seize the day Mm -hmm. is like the overarching theme of this entire movie and um like we'll see mr keating has such a large impact with this lesson on all the boys they each and every one of them sees the day in some different way Mm -hmm. they all have a really big character change yeah um, throughout the movie um, so I wrote right the first thing about this is Mr. Keating's a great teacher, but the carpe the, the carpe diem like whispering is so scary. Yeah, he's like standing behind them and he's like Carpe I was <laughs> <laughs> just like Robin Williams, calm down. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, um okay. This is also where like um like the biggest like thing that's quoted from this movie is besides carpe diem sees mm-hmm. today is oh captain my captain yes um which is actually a quote from something different uh, walt Whit- whitman one yeah. of his poems yeah yeah um, um so he has the boys call him the captain. captain yeah um yeah so oh. oh captain my captain right. um what do you have next because the next thing i have is Knox over at the dinner oh that go ahead okay With that, cool. i don't have that um, so the next thing we see is that Knox Overstreet yes. is going to meet some alums from this private school mm-hmm. that are friends with his father mm-hmm. and have dinner with them and try and talk him up and be like, haha, I'm a good student, you know. Yeah. But as soon as he gets there. They have a daughter. No, they don't. They don't? This is their, no, that's what I thought at first, too. Because I even put that in my presentation because that's what it said on the website but it was using. she is using. their daughter. No. 
It's their son's girlfriend. Wait. Yeah. What? Yeah. Hold up. I know. I thought, no way. Yeah. What the crap? Okay, fine. Yeah. So they have a son. They have a son, son who's like, they they describe it as he's basically engaged to her. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um. Anyway, so her name is Chris, and yes. she opens the door, and he like instantly falls in love with her, yeah. basically. And like she's cute, and like his feelings for her are cute at first. He takes it a little too far later, and it's a little uncomfortable. It's, but I had written yeah. uh, earlier that like, oh, Knox is so sweet because mm-hmm. the way he like talks about her is so nice. But then he's like, yeah. So then we're back in class. Yes. And uh, Mr. Keating is like, let's read the introduction of our poetry book. (laughs) And then, so they read the introduction, and he's like, yeah, no. No. And he makes all the boys rip out the introduction of their textbooks. Which is awesome, by the way. Like, can you imagine the teacher telling you to rip up your textbook? That, first of all, you had to either, like pay for or like the like you had to check it out of the library and mm-hmm. all these boys are just ripping it out so they're gonna have to pay the fines for them. yeah and this is kind of where we see the first clash of like mr keating and the uh, other the faculty and yeah. yeah everyone else. um because uh, who is it that comes in um who is he shoot, I'm not somebody sure. who's above mr keating i don't think it's the the headmaster quite yet but i'm not sure i don't know i can't i couldn't tell the difference between the same. two dudes. they all look the same somebody who's above they're him. just old white guys so yeah. just imagine that um comes in and he's like what the heck are you guys doing and then mr keating's like i don't hear any ripping <laughs> and the guy who's ahead of him is like oh i didn't no, you were in here. And he's like, yep, I am. Keep ripping, boy. <laughs> Keep ripping, boy. So that's the first, like, clash we see between. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so, again, with this, he's encouraging them to become artists yeah, and free which is thinkers. Nice. It's cool. Like... Instead of robots. Okay, yeah. Um, what do you have next? Uh, the yearbook. The yearbook. Oh, okay, talk about that. Yeah. So, the boys are like, who is this dude? And they find um, Mr. Keating also went to that private well, school. Yeah. Yeah. And they find, they find, they find, they find. his um, senior yearbook. And they're like, oh, Captain, um, what mm-hmm. is this? And he looks at it. And there's a thing on it. And it was like president of the dead poet society or something and they're like what's that and he explains it to them and Mm -hmm. they're like oh that sounds interesting and neil is like let's do it yeah so they (laughs) decide to form the newly rejoined dead Dead poet society Society. so you know there's whatever like boys hijinks but eventually that night they meet yeah um, they go they sneak out of the school at Mm -hmm. night and they go to this cave um i don't know what i'm looking at (laughs) and they just start well neil starts by reciting the beginning of the meeting because mr keating snuck the dead poet society book Mm -hmm. to him uh to try and like encourage without really encouraging him to revive the dead poet society um, but they end up just, like, talking the rest of the night and yeah. then going back. So I wrote um, a quality time with the boys reading poetry in a cave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this – any time that they have, like, a meeting or they're in the cave, it's a really funny scene. Yeah. Um, especially the next time they meet. Um, it, it's great. Mm-hmm. Okay. So next um. – they're back in class. Yes. Yes. Uh, Keating is making the class, like, actually enjoyable for the yeah. kids. I They show, like, a few different scenes of him doing other things. Like, Robin Williams is doing his classic impressions and mm-hmm. just um, trying, like, reading it to them but making it interesting to where it will also apply to them. Yeah. Um, and then he tries to teach them about different perspectives and yeah. he has them all stand up on his desk and take a look awesome. around the room and that's it, so cool what though. a good metaphor yeah <laughs> just like looking at things from a different perspective i feel like a lot of people could do that yeah 
yeah that's all i gotta say about that Mm -hmm. um and then he at the end he says that their next assignment will be composing their own poem and reciting it in front of the class and todd Mm -hmm. is like whoa (laughs) no (laughs) haha you thought todd's the shy kid again so he does not want to get up and read one of his own poems in front of the class but he has a secret poet inside yeah (laughs) <laughs> i think we all have a secret poet inside right. okay okay um so, oh see. neil finds a poster oh, yes. uh-huh. for auditions for this play that's outside of the school right for so midsummer doing, night dream yeah, shakespeare's midsummer night dream that's my favorite shakespeare show um so i wrote all neil wants to do is act he He's just wants so act. excited he finally, he feels like he's got his calling. He's like, I've always wanted to try this. Yeah. Um, he's so, so cute. Oh, my I gosh. Um, my boy. So what Neil decides to do is he decides to forge a letter from his father so he can play Puck in the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. He gets to play Puck. He auditions. Yes. He and auditions he gets the part he gets of Puck. The part of the lead. Oh. What a bean. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> um, so the next day happens. They wake up to bagpipes. I wrote, I cannot imagine waking up to bagpipes <laughs> every day. What a world. Yeah. Um, and um, they're in class. They're doing class outside yeah. with sports and poetry. Sports. So they all get in a line outside. And Mr. Keating gives them, like, a little slip of paper that has a line of poetry on them. And mm-hmm. so they have to, like, say the line like, of poetry. Gotta, like, and yell then, it with feeling. Yeah. And, like, and then the kick it with the ball. <laughs> kick kick the ball. Yeah. So the next scene we have is they're in class. And this is mm-hmm. the day where they have to present their, their poetry. Poems. So the first one to go is... um. Knox. Knox. And he wrote a love poem about Chris. And all the boys laugh at they him. They laugh at him. It was so cute. It made me sad. I hate it was that, a like, good poem, too. I hate that the boys, like, like, they love each other and stuff, but they, like, laugh e- at each other and don't support each other. Yeah. And honestly. But they're just boys. So, like, uh, of course they don't. But, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay so So the um, guy who laughed at him mostly he was asked to get up and do his poem and he says a cat cat sat on a mat mat. um (laughs) i was looking up fun facts about this movie and i think Mm -hmm. don't quote me on this um i think the one i read specifically about this guy is that at the school that they filmed at he was an actual student from that school. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. So. Okay. So um, then um, the next person to get ta- uh, called up is Todd. And, and Todd Mr. didn't Keating's, write one. Mr. Heating's like, get up here. Like, we'll put you out of your misery. Yeah. Uh, get you down. I like their relationship throughout the whole thing. It's really funny. He calls him a really funny name before, like, he leaves the classroom one time. Um, and it was, like, hilarious. So, like. I wish I could remember God. what it was. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Um, so, um, um, Todd did not write a poem, because no. he's an anxious little boy, yeah. and Mr. Keaton's like, okay, fine, get up here, and this would not fly in classrooms nowadays, mm-mm, uh-uh. mm-mm, mm-mm. but he covers <laughs> Todd's eyes and starts spinning him around, and he starts asking him to, like, describe, like, what he sees, and, like, come up with, like, basically, he's coming up with a poem, like, himself, like, like in his on, mind, the spot. on the spot. Um, and... <clears throat> oh, it's really good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so good. So this is what we mean by his his secret poem inside. But I wrote, if a teacher spun me around and had me talk about a sweaty tooth madman, I would cry. So Todd's Todd poem, looked like he was crying. <laughs> yeah. His poem was about a sweaty tooth madman who is always like there and like I, how did he, well, he describe it like um. The the uh the bed sheets are like the yeah covers. there's a blanket but it'll never be long enough to cover his feet and no matter how hard you try or how much you pull you'll never be able to do it basically yeah. and it's kind of like a metaphor for you know all the pressures that these yeah. parents put on their kids I mean I think I think the poem spoke to a lot of the boys uh-huh. um yeah it's actually really good mm-hmm. so. so um. That's the last thing I have about that scene. What do you have next? Yeah. Um, they're smoking in the cave. Yes. So <laughs> they're all they've all got pipes, which how they got them, I will never know. Um, how they smuggled them into the school. Who 
<laughs> Great question. Yeah. Um, so um, Charlie brings a saxophone into this tiny little cave. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote, Charlie is that kid. Like, he's definitely the kid that bring a saxophone into a cave. Yeah. So he's, like, playing all, like, funny and, like, I don't know. This whole thing's, like, hilarious. Yeah, he incorporates the poetry he wrote with his saxophone, and the boys are like, mm-hmm. that was actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, and so that's happening, and Knox is over here like, bruh, I need Chris. I want Chris. Yeah. I'm gonna go call her. So they're, so like, they're like, what? what? And they all follow him into the school, <laughs> and he goes to the phone, and he's like, my parents would kill me, but he calls Chris. And she tells him that she is having a party and he should go. And he's like, I'll be there. Yeah. So he sneaks out and he um, goes to the party. He's convinced that she will be his. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, like it was sweet at first. But now it's like, yikes, you're going to a party. Of course, your boyfriend's going to be there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The next thing <clears throat> is um, they're having class in the courtyard. Mm hmm. And Mr. Keating is making three of the boys, like, just walk around the courtyard to prove yeah. a point. Uh, they start walking, like, at their own pace, like, what, however they feel. But then they all start to conform. And then everybody starts clapping with the rhythm of the walking. Yeah. And Mr. Keating was, like, this was a lesson to teach you to not conform and to find your own way of walking. Yeah. Because we're all, like... Um, mentally wired to conform because that's kind of how... And now, while they're out, all out there, there's, like, definitely teachers watching from out the windows oh, yeah, at what's happening. Yeah. Um, so there's that class. What happens next? It's Todd's birthday. Oh, poor Todd. It's Todd's birthday, and he's, like, sitting out by himself, <clears throat> and Neil comes over, and he's like, what's up? And Todd's <laughs> like, it's my birthday. And he got <laughs> a writing set for his birthday. The For the same second time one he got last year. Yeah. Oh. So, so this whole scene is really I love this scene. like the way like Neil treats it. It's really funny. Like, oh, you got the best writing set in the world. Now you have like, it twice. It feels like it wants to fly. I mm, don't know. it? <laughs> and they chuck it off of the building. It's so funny. <laughs> and Neil is like, ah, that's all right. You'll get the same one next year. <laughs> Um, okay yeah. um so the next thing that happens is um two things going back and forth yeah. so would you would you like to talk about one of them first and then the other one sure i have the party first. the party first okay so um warning Knox is gonna do some Something uncomfy scary. things um yeah um so Knox is at the party mm-hmm. and chris is like oh yeah i gotta go find my boyfriend <laughs> And she goes up the stairs, um, and Knox is cornered by these two guys yeah. who think... Knox is mega uncomfy. Like, everybody's making out, and, like, he's like, I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> right. Um, so um. he goes into the kitchen to get a beer, and these two guys corner him and like, hey, you're... You're that guy's that brother, guy's aren't brother. you? And he's like, no. no. And they keep talking they're to like, him. They're like, yeah, you are. So he's they, great. They pour him a glass of whiskey... And, and they're, they're like, like cheers, to, cheers your brother. to your brother cheers cheers and he's they like, keep Whatever. like they so. keep doing this until he's drunk until he's very drunk so and let's he's... swap over to the next thing because i you know like, that's kind of how it goes so okay. the boys are in a cave again. <gasps> and somebody brought girls charlie brought girls oh my god! and he gets up in front of everyone he proclaims his name is Nuwanda. <laughs> yeah, he no longer goes by Charlie. Yes. So um, for the rest of this, we're going to refer to him as his chosen name, Nuwanda. Um, um, he brings these two girls. I can't remember what one of them's name is, but I one don't... of them's name is Tina. Tina. <laughs> <laughs> um, he starts, like, quoting Shakespeare to one of them and, t- and claiming it as his own. And she's like, did you write that? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, And it's like... a. One of the most famous quotes from Romeo and Juliet. Where did like, he find these girls? I don't know. How did... I don't know. Okay. Like, we know how Knox knows the girl. Like, she goes to a public school. Yeah. Um, but it's because he met her before. But how Nuanda knows these girls, we'll never know. I don't know. But he found him somewhere. Right. Okay. So... 
The boys are just up to their shenanigans there, and then we go, go back to Knox. Yeah. So, Knox is stumbling through this party, mm-hmm. and he goes to sit down on the couch. Yeah. And there's, like, a couple making out, like, basically on, on top him. of him. Um, and then he two... He kind of scoots over. Yeah. But then he runs into... Chris is asleep on the couch. He scoots over, and he's right next to her. And he's like, and there's he's my girl. Like, he's like whoa (laughs) and this part i did not like this part is mega uncomfy he doesn't like do anything too awful thankfully but he does lean over and kiss her on the forehead while she's sleeping and it's mega uncomfy and then her boyfriend sees actually one of the guys who was getting him oh yeah he sees and he's like bro look He's on your girl. Which, like, honestly, I don't know how they would have seen that. Right. Yeah, because they were very far away, but yeah. they saw. Um, so the boyfriend gets up and punches Knox in the nose. Yeah. And, and Chris, Chris is like, like, no, don't hit him. Don't hurt him. No. Don't hurt him, bro. That's no. <laughs> bad. Uh, but I don't know. I think Knox deserved it. Yeah. I mean, he was kissing my guy's girlfriend while she was asleep. And It was a non-consensual forehead kiss. I'm not okay with it. <laughs> Um, so like if you saw someone like you know like if you were to yeah no that's not her, okay that's, that's not okay kissing people while they're sleeping is not okay do not take advice from prince charming from snow white <laughs> okay um, um so then back in the cave yeah um this i haven't written down a saxophone guy in all of my notes saxophone i don't have his actual name written down anywhere <laughs> Yolanda? okay uh he's like so guys i um published a article in the paper mm-hmm. in the name of the dead poet society and they're like you idiot right because you're, you're not gonna get us to all away. in trouble and so oh, so then they it then they have an assembly because like the heads of the school are pissed <laughs> and <laughs> they're like, obviously like they think that they're up to shenanigans they're like, like whoever admits boy, shouldn't be free thinking yeah Ooh. they're like whoever admits to doing this right now won't get suspended mm-hmm. so then a phone rings but they can't figure out where the phone is coming from and saxophone guy stands up with the phone and he's like hello uh yes they're calling to say we should have girls <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so funny so he takes the fall for everything yeah. <laughs> and he gets punished in a big bad way he gets spanked he gets paddled Sp- in the headmaster's class um, which is uncomfy to watch yeah. and but he's like and he comes like back to the room and he's crying and he's angry but he, he like turns back and he's like like, they call him Charlie. Like, what happened? He's like, remember, it's Nuanda. So, like, we, we know he, like, didn't give him away. And yeah. he's like, you know. Um, let's see. What's after that? We have play the rehearsal. Play. Yeah. Um, so, Neil, we get a quick glimpse of Neil at the play rehearsal yeah. and how happy he is. And he's going back to his room afterwards. And his dad is there. And his dad is angry. His dad is very angry. Dad's like, how dare you? Um, how did you think you'd get away with this? Yeah. So I think his niece or someone that he works with or, like, someone he knows, their niece is in the play yeah. with Neil. And he's like, oh, your boy is in the play with my girl. And he's like, what? No, he's not. It's like, you made me a liar, Neil. Oh, my gosh. Like, bro. Chill. Dude. Anyway, so his dad tells him to quit. Mm-hmm. But tomorrow's opening night. He can't yeah. quit. And he's the lead. Yeah. Like, what the heck? Anyway, yeah. so after this, Neil goes to get advice from Mr. Keating, and he Neil basically pours his heart out to Mr. Keating and is like, this is the only thing that makes me feel alive anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mr. Keating is like, then just tell your dad that. Tell yeah. your dad what you just told me. And then um, he's like, show your dad. Go do the play and, like, show him that this is what inspires you. And this yeah. is, like, you know. Um, after this scene, we get a scene of Knox going over to Chris's school. Ugh. 
um, and apologizing to her with flowers and with a poem that he wrote. He reads her a poem in front of the class. Yeah. And obviously, these people all know her and her boyfriend because you assume they're popular. He's like the head football player. She's like a cheerleader. Yeah. So, like, you know they're popular kids. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Well, after this scene, we find out that Neil gets to do the play. Yay! His dad's not going to come, but he gets to do the play. So all the boys go, Mr. Heating goes, and then um, we find out that Chris is also going to the play. Yes. So she um, she and Knox have a little confrontation mm-hmm. um, where she's like, you're infuriating. And he's like, oh, but you like me, though. And, like... Turns out she does like him, whatever, and she's like, "Fine, we'll I go get to the that play though." Together, <laughs> yeah. So, so he's yeah. like, he's like, "We'll just go to this play together, and if you don't ever want to see me again, I'll go. I yeah. promise." So um, they decide to go together, and from there on, it looks like they're gonna have an okay relationship. Yeah. So, um, the play, the play, everybody's so impressed it looks by so Neil. Cool. The, the play is so pretty looking. He, Bro, have you ever seen a live production of Midsummer? Never. Dude. It's so I've pretty. seen a couple productions of it before. It's really good. It's my favorite Shakespeare show, <laughs> and I will stand by that till the day I die. Um, but the different interpretations of the show are really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody's really impressed with Neil's acting. Yeah. And cause... Neil notices his dad came in like halfway through. <gasps> he did. He saw him at the back of the theater and he's like, uh oh. So the play goes great. The, the play goes great. Happy. Knox uh, gets to hold Chris's hand. Yeah. Um, uh, so they Neil, get a standing ovation. Neil, um, he's in backstage. He's talking with the cast and like everyone like, oh, you did a good job. You did a good job. And then his, his dad's like, he wants to see him. Mm-hmm. So he's, like, ushered out to see his dad, and his dad's angry, and his dad just takes him away. He doesn't get to say anything with the boys or anything. Yeah. Mr. Keating tries to come up and, like, be like, you have a gift, Neil. Like, you need to pursue this. And um, Neil's dad like, pushes Neil away and is like, get in the car. Don't talk to my boy again. Yeah, he, like, threatens Mr. Keating. Yeah. It's a mess. So after Neil's dad takes Neil away, they go mm-hmm. back to their house and his dad is like yeah we're taking you out of school we're putting you into military school yeah like, you are gonna be a doctor and neil's like that's 10 more years of like schooling and stuff and neil doesn't want that Mm-mm. he wants to act and he tries to he gets up and he's like oh yeah well you ever think about how i feel and he wants to like tell them how he feels and he's like what how do you feel and he just says nothing he says nothing because he's uh, you can see in his face he knows that no matter what he says nothing's gonna change it doesn't matter if he tells his dad how he feels or not nothing Mm -hmm. will change um Um, now his mom looks pretty like upset about this but she doesn't say anything no um to help so i think that's also kind of like um thinking about the context of when this movie takes place that like women Mm -hmm. don't have a say in the household of if their children get to do something or like anything to do with big decision mm-hmm. stuff besides so, what's for dinner yeah so. so his dad is like okay fine we're going to bed so his dad goes to bed and his mom she stays behind to like like just tell neil like oh just go to bed and she's mm-hmm. crying and she like goes to bed so yeah. his parents are in bed his mom's crying his dad's like oh it's fine um yeah so neil so, has this like moment neil has a moment um trigger warning we are going to talk about suicide um Neil is just completely numb. Yeah. I mean, um, he has nothing. Like, he's just going to be sent away to military school. For he's 10 lost years. hope. He has nothing left, basically, is what he's thinking. There's no escape mm-hmm. from his doomed, unfulfilling future. Yeah. Because his father won't let him, he can't escape from his dad, and his dad won't let him do what he wants to do. Mm hmm. So he goes down to his dad's office. Well, first he goes to his room. He opens the windows and he puts the puck crown on one more time while he's just standing in the window. And he's just like, I don't. I think that represents him like soaking up his glory one last time. Yeah. 
And he's just, like, breathing the fresh air. Mm-hmm. And then he goes downstairs. His dad's all, uh, uh, I think he goes down to the, to their room first. Um, he opens their um, his dad's drawer, like, um, his bedside cabinet right next to his bed. And he takes out, like, something that you can't see. And it's, like, something, like, wrapped up in cloth. And then he goes downstairs. Mm-hmm. He goes to his dad's office. Mm-hmm. And you don't see it. Mm-hmm. But you know he shot himself yeah um, his... and you can't like hear it either no there's just like a, like a loud like beat and like the music or like yeah the, like, sound that's and happening. his and then we cut to his dad being like what was that like jolting away yeah. and they're like where's neil mm-hmm. and they go looking around the house and his dad ends up finding him downstairs downstairs yeah um and his dad's like worried and he's like no and he's like no my boy my boy stop it and like his mom like comes down she's like crying and mm-hmm. like this is the first time like his dad like shows like he cares about him at all basically yeah i mean well and that's the thing he does is, care about him yeah he cares about him but like he cares about him as in like this is my legacy right basically this yeah. is like, you are going to carry on my name, so you need to do all these great things to make me look good. Yeah. Basically. Um, I don't, this is the first kind of, like, emotion we see from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we don't see him for the rest of the movie. This is the only emotion we see from his yeah. dad. Um, um, so, we cut back to the school. And the boys are finding out. Yeah. The so news. um everyone found out before Todd, which is funny because Todd's roommate. Um Yeah, how did they find out? I don't know. So all the boys are in the doorway and then who's it is it Charlie that comes in? Um uh, I think it's either Charlie or Knox. I'm pretty sure it's Charlie. I think it's Charlie. Um so Charlie's like by his bedside, he's crying and he's like, Wake up, Todd and Todd's like, nah. And then he like, like shakes him awake again and he like says, Neil's dead. And mm-hmm. then all the boys, like, get up and, like, they run outside in the snow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Todd is taking it really difficult. Yeah. He, like, runs off into the snow, like, out in front of all the other boys. And he's, like, angry. He's, like, kicking the snow. And he's, like... Yeah. yeah. He, like, almost throws up at one point. Like, mm-hmm. this is really hard on Todd. And I think it's because, like, something that we didn't really mention. But Todd and Neil have a really close connection because I feel like mm-hmm. Todd is so shy that Neil is the only one he can really, like, connect with yeah. in this entire movie. And he even told, movie. like, Todd before, like, um, like, about the poem thing. Like, they won't listen to me. Um, they'll listen to you. Um, yeah. Like, when you, when Neil was trying to encourage him to write his poem... Um, yeah. before and then he like chased him around the room and it was like like they've been like friends this whole time like the birthday scene was another like thing that showed that yeah um yeah so todd is essentially lost his best friend right i mean i'd say his only friend but i think at this point him and the other boys are like kind of on friend terms mm-hmm. uh so yeah. um they go to like I guess it's like a funeral service. Not like a funeral funeral, but it's like a like an honor, like mm-hmm. his life kind of thing at the school and they're all singing a song. And this shot's really interesting. They shoot it from like looking at all the boys like I guess like like not directly in the face, like more their side profile and like yeah. everyone's singing except for um Charlie. And he just like looks like sad, like dead. Yeah. It's it's yeah. sad. Um Um the head people as a school want to know like who is behind this and they Mm -hmm. are investigating what's going on right uh so the boys are in the attic just hanging out being like we can't like this was his dad like even there's todd says earlier like his dad must have killed him like neil wouldn't kill himself his dad must have killed him but Mm -hmm. um they're like they're gonna blame us though Right, and um, specifically Mr. Keating. Yeah. So, um, so Cameron, they're... The little rat boy. Cameron is being interviewed at this moment, and they're like, Cameron's going to snitch. He's going to tell him all about the Dead Poet Society and everything we've done and, mm-hmm. like, the girls and, like, all these things. And so Cameron comes back, and they're like, 
what'd you say, you snitch? And he is like, I just told him what they needed to know. Because Mr. Keating is the one who did all of this. Mr. Keating is, uh, like, ruining all of us, don't you know? And Cameron, like, Cameron has never been on their side. Like, yeah. ever. He might have pretended, but, like, no. He wants Mr. Keating to be in trouble. Right. He's on the side of the headmaster and so, all So, uh, Nuanda gets very angry and he punches him in the face. Yeah. And then he gets expelled. Too. So, we don't see him very much, like, ever again, yeah. I don't think. They He's all gone. end up um, having to be interviewed. And mm-hmm. when they all come back, they're like, I don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Todd goes in to be interviewed, and his parents are there. And they basically just make him, force him to sign a paper saying that Mr. Keating is the reason for all of this. Yeah, and he sees, like, on the paper all the other boys signed it, too. Yeah. Except for Nuanda, but he was like, no. Yeah. Um, so, um, you can see Todd's, like, very conflicted by this. Like, he does not want to sign mm-hmm. it, but his dad's, like... Because Mr. Keating didn't do anything. Right. If but... anything, Mr. Keating was the good in all of this. Yeah, but... and his dad's like, dang it, Todd, Just sign, sign the it. paper. <laughs> so, he signs it, um... And then he goes, like, back to their life. So we cut to another scene where they're in class. They're again. in class. And Mr. The Keating is gone. Yeah, he was told to leave. Um, the headmaster is teaching this class now, this English class. Mm-hmm. And you can see, like, how, like, sad Todd is. And then someone yeah. knocks at the door. <gasps> Who is it? It's Mr. Keating. Oh, my gosh. And he comes to collect his personals. Wow. Um, um, yeah, so at, Mr. Keating is, like, in the back in his office, like, trying to get the rest of his things before mm-hmm. he leaves. And as he's <laughs> heading out the door, Todd stands up and is like, they made us all sign the paper. Like, we don't actually believe this. I love you. Like, please stay. We, I can't survive this heck hole without you. <laughs> and and, Rob, and Mr. Keating is like, <laughs> Mr. Keating is like, I know. I know, Todd. And the headmaster is like, sit down down mr anderson <laughs> and you know what he does instead of sitting down he stands on his desk he stands on his desk and proclaims oh, oh captain, captain my, my captain. captain and then the next boy stands up and then the next boy stands up uh, who all stands up i'm pretty sure like everybody Knox... stands up except for cameron and like two other boys yeah like Knox, um meeks Picks. But the whole gang stands yeah, up. Yeah, like, the main gang and then, like, two little nerdy boys. Um, yeah. One who's got, like... That we get, like, glimpses nerds. of in the movie. But yeah. we don't know their names. And, you, yeah, you can see that, like, Cameron's not standing. And there's a couple other people who aren't. Yeah. But all the boys who are standing, like, um, Mr. Keating's last thing he says is, thank you, boys. That's it. And that's it. Sad. Sad. Because we don't know what happens. Like, no, we don't. Nuanda has gone. Um, here's some fun facts about this movie. Um, I only have two that I retained in my memory. Okay. Um, so one of them is that the writer of this movie like partially based this off of his life, oh. um, and his experience in a private school in Georgia and a teacher he had there. Mm-hmm. And then another one is that um, there was supposed to be there was a sequel planned. Mm -hmm. Um, but it got canceled due to the unavailability of the original cast. The sequel, Mm. I think it was Todd Anderson. It was centered around Todd again, but he has become a teacher and is using (gasps) Mr. Keating's ways of teaching. Yeah, but it got canceled. What? We'll never see it. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's Dead Poet Society. It's a good movie. It's a really good movie. Um, It's very long. Um, <laughs> but it was great. It's yeah. good. The couple of times I've seen it now, I liked it every time. So. Yeah, it's on Hulu at the moment. If you want to watch it, uh, if you know Hulu, you know they take things off very quickly. So go watch it while you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna take a break and then we'll be back. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. <laughs> Welcome back. back. Okay, shout outs. Uh, yeah. These are shout outs for people who participated in our weekly, uh, except for last week, um, <laughs> movie guessing game mm-hmm. on Instagram. Make sure you go check out our Instagram and participate. Mm-hmm. Um, if you win, then we will shout out whatever you want us to on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And if you are the second and third person, we'll just say your name. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so uh-huh. our winner is Allie. 
who was a fellow drama club alumni yeah. from our high school. She's mm-hmm. epicness. Um, she said, I asked her what she wants us to shout out. And she said, I guess just a shout out to any high school theater kids who have been hit with COVID and had shows canceled. Oh, so that's she so nice. is sending all of her love to all of you. And I am sending all of my love and because I'm I know all of my love. how that feels. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> it's very sad. So thank you very much. Thank mm-hmm. you for participating in our game. And our runner ups were Reagan and Tommy. Congrats. Woo. Okay. Questions. We have a few questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your favorite thing about college? Hmm. That's hard. Uh, I just <laughs> like being able to use my brain again. <gasps> I was going to say that. You copycat. Oh, well, it's true. <laughs> okay. Well, I also like, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm having a good time just being a human and like going to get food and just like surviving. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like. Like, I've been, I've had more, like, self-care than I usually would if I was just, like, living in my room, like, at home. You know what I mean? I can't really. (laughs) Um, No, I enjoy, like, legitimately learning things. Same. Because, personally, I felt like I didn't learn anything in, um high school i learned theater and i learned band i learned i learned theater because i didn't have bands i could i literally like can like tell you like three other things that i learned maybe Um, not even that many i can tell you things i learned that i taught myself but (laughs) not that a teacher taught me um i learned well, things i guess i could give you a few things from junior year english but that was like a college level class so but I don't know. I like learning. Like, I started philosophy this week, and I love just sitting there and listening to him teach. Like, mm-hmm. whoa. Like, mind-blowing stuff. I'm in speech right now, too. And, like, I'm, like, it's such, like, a, an interesting way of, like, having a class. Like, I love it. It's yeah. so nice. Okay. So. I like the classes that are, <clears throat> like, conversational. Yeah. I feel like my philosophy class is like that, even though I'm 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 over here, I don't talk at all in any of my classes, same. but I love listening to other people's conversations. Yeah, same. Um I my English class last semester was like my favorite class I've had so far. It was awesome. And like the conversation we had I didn't like participate in class conversation until it was online for the while we had the snow days. Yeah. And then I'd like chat. Um, yeah. Because I, I, I no I can't. Yeah. Okay, so opinions on double majoring. I'm not double majoring. <laughs> Same. I'm also not double majoring. Um, I, I, think... I don't fault anyone who does it. I mean, no. good for you. Here's my opinion on double majoring. Um, college is very hard. Yes. Um, especially because I know the person who asked this went to our high school. Oh. Um, cult- culture shock, basically, is right. how I would describe coming to college. It's especially crazy. from our high school where... I feel like at our high school, we just had very low standards. Yeah. Because, oh, gosh, yeah. Because we're, we're from Maury County, and we have just in our little bubble society, right. Spring Hill, um, our standards in that county are set lower because right next to us is Williamson County, one of the richest counties in the United States. Mm-hmm. And they have, like, such a good school system and all these things. So, trying to get back on track about double majoring, um, coming to college is a big culture shock because of that. Because I feel that growing up in the public school system that I did, we just had very low standards for right. ourselves I and agree. you can get away with anything um like we ma- said um we we feel like we're using our brains now yeah like this is and... the first time like i'm able to think for myself basically. i feel like there's just so much going on i know it would be like incredibly difficult for me to be double majoring because of what i'm doing and Same. i have like lessons and i have like things to prepare for and perform all the time i just have mental blocks I feel. <laughs> keep me so, from doing these things um, but i think that if yeah you really have the work ethic and you want if you want to do it then do it yeah. i mean psh, go ahead i mean it's all wrong worst thing comes to worst you can always just drop that's one thing about co- like college is like you can we just, see people like asking like all the time like oh can we just drop this class and take it later when we're prepared for no it? i dropped a class yeah um earlier this semester um 
and it was great I mean like I still had so much on my plate Mm -hmm. but it was like I at least got the peas off my plate yeah because it was too (laughs) difficult for me at that very moment I have a friend who is a junior and she just changed her major from performance to composition because she decided she didn't want to perform anymore she she didn't like it Mm -hmm. so uh it's definitely possible she's a junior so at any point if you decide you don't want to do it anymore you don't have to yeah I think if you want to do it go ahead but be prepared to put in the work yeah that's what I gotta say mm-hmm. about that. Next question. Next question. How do you get girl? girl? How do you get girl from two girls who are in relationships? How do you get girl? How do you get girl? Uh, I would say some huh. of the biggest things are first of all communication and talking to girl. Um, right. Is yeah, the biggest thing. Do not ignore girl. Talk to girl. I agree. I know that. Uh, I've been friends with you know, the nice guys that finish last um, throughout my life. And I feel like their biggest issue is that they don't go and talk to girls. I agree. Girls are not going to bite your head off. (laughs) Um, The other thing is that how I look at, how I've always kind of looked at relationships is that dating is preparation for marriage. Yeah, That's kind of how I've always looked at dating i agree yeah i don't think it's a good idea when like people get into relationships knowing like oh yeah we're gonna break up like before the end of the year or like yeah. before we graduate or whatever like if they set yeah. a limit on it then what's the point personally i take relationships very seriously yeah <laughs> because i have that mindset mm-hmm. um so i think that when uh, along with going up and just talking to girl um just when if you have a certain girl in mind mm-hmm. Think about what attracts you to this girl. Are they superficial things? Or are they, like, how she makes you feel? (laughs) Does that make Um, sense? Another thing that I think of is what I did um, and what I like to do. I like to give people gifts, um, but not things that I buy. Specifically, like, handmade, like, things. And if you're not, like, a crafty person, it doesn't have to be, like, great. It's just from you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. So I think giving her something that makes that like makes her know that you've been thinking about her. Yeah. And like something that like you can tell is like from the heart and not some like cheap like candy you bought. Like. Yeah. I love homemade things. Yeah. Like my boyfriend has a 3D printer and I <laughs> love the knickknacks he makes me. Yeah. It's like my prized possession. And if even if like you can't like if you don't have the time to make things like buying things that you know specifically that she would like. So yeah. like take the time to think about it or like ask her questions in conversation. But like, what's also, your favorite kind of chocolate or things? Like I that? would add on top of that. Never mind. We'll talk about that later. Not on the podcast because oh, I was okay. about to call out a specific person, but like I don't want to do. That. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. What I usually do. What usually happens for me is that I just become really good friends with a guy. <laughs> because, oh. And then I'm like, I think I have romantic feelings for this person. Yeah. Oh, no. Here we go again. We go and again. Um, I mean, even the relation. I've never technically asked anybody out before. But yeah. like in the relationship I'm in now, I mean we started dating at the very beginning of like lockdown COVID yeah. and we would text each other every day and my feelings would just grow more and more getting to know him more mm-hmm. and um, being like, Oh, I love these things about him. And I love how mm. he makes me feel and all these things. Um, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> so eventually, um, I I had started to get feelings before that, but um, eventually, I was just like, I gotta tell you something. <laughs> yeah, that's the same. I, I like you. I did the same um, thing. <laughs> um, I told Marty um, over Discord. By the way, we had been playing Minecraft together. So how I get to know people is I play Minecraft with them <laughs> because you know it's a good person if they can play Minecraft with you. Um, so we'd been playing Minecraft for a while, and, like, he, like, left, and I was talking to some friends on the phone, and I'm like, oh, just do it. So I was like, hey, I like you, and he said, me too, I guess. Yeah. And that's the start of, uh, almost three years next month. Yeah, so, <laughs> oh my god, it's, bro, my one-year anniversary is on, in two weeks. <gasps> <gasps> I just realized that. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Completely slipped my mind. I've been thinking it was April for a while. My like, don't April, even so don't yet. even start with me. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um, you should see the bags under my eyes. Oh, anyway. same. All right. Um, but anyway, long story short, how do you get to girl? Talk to her, actually get to know her. Yeah. And you know give her gifts, be kind. Yeah. Just be a nice person. I feel like I feel like women's standards these days are so low and we're just looking for a nice guy. <laughs> nice feel- guys don't always finish last, okay? <laughs> That's what we're looking for. But don't be like that stereotypical nice guy. No, like don't, be a simp. Yeah, don't be a simp. Yeah, don't be a simp. Okay. That's don't it. Be End a of simp. podcast. Don't be a simp. That's what you have to carry away from this episode. <laughs> don't be a simp. If you didn't hear anything else we said, <laughs> don't be Okay. Oh my god. That's it. That was a big tangent, and I don't think we got anywhere with it. This is, like, the longest but... episode we've ever done, okay? No, it's not. Not even close. Goodbye, but... and good night, and thanks for listening. Follow our Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, goodbye. Dude. <laughs>for joining us this week on pop culturing my best friend tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things please subscribe to our youtube channel and follow us on instagram at pop culturing my bff underscore podcast for behind the scenes content and more